All right. Um, good day, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the third installation of our study sessions, uh, where we're still um, detailing module one. Here in this um, study session, we'll be discussing data collection, and it's a very interesting aspect of um, a research study. My name is Abdul Hakim Olorukom. I'm a public health physician and a senior lecturer in the public health informatics unit of the Department of Community Medicine. Um, I'm at Bello University, Zaria. Um, so we're still on module one. And if you remember in the first study session, we discussed about the meaning of statistics. And we said that um, statistics can either mean um, statistical data or statistical methods, right? So uh, we went on to say that as um, a statistical method, statistics just generally refers to the methods used in collecting, organizing, and um, analysis and interpretation of data for decision making, right? So the whole thing is about decision making, but we want to make decisions based on uh, factual events or based on facts, not just based on hearsay. Okay, we went ahead now to say that for us to be able to collect data correctly, we have to have some standards. And those standards help us to um, determine how and when uh, we store the data. So, and those standards are variables, which we described as containers that allows you to put in um, the data elements that you've collected. Well, in session three, we will explain how uh, the collection aspect is done, how you collect this data uh, and how this is important. This is a, an important first step in the process of, um, of data collection. So session three is going to be on data collection study. If you remember also in session two, we talked about variables and how these variables are used to guide the measurements that um, you will be doing. So in this study session, we will just utilize what we have learned from all the previous study sessions to come to a good understanding of the topic at hand. Right. And then finally, in the next study session, we will now be going to where are the areas or where are the sources where you can um, get this data from. So um, just relax. We're going to uh, run through this. It's going to be fast. It's going to be interesting. Um, uh, I assure you. So thank you for joining in. Um, this is um, the outline in which we're going to go. We'll achieve this our study session, a completeness in our study session, by going through an introduction, explaining what is an objective, and we're going to talk about goals. We're going to also talk about um, the scope of the inquiry in relation to data. You know, um, when we talk about inquiries, what do we mean and what is a statistical inquiry? So we're going to go ahead to also um, talk about different terminologies which are pertinent in our discussion. Yeah, so we're going to be a little technical, but I assure you are things that you can easily understand and um, and and relate very well with. So we'll be using a lot of examples. We'll be spending time with a lot of examples just to make sure that you can relate with what we're saying and what you um, can understand. So we will also talk in detail about the requisites, right, uh, that you need for um, doing a statistical study. What are what we call statistical units and how you can um, use this when you are doing a study. Notice that a lot of the things we're talking about in biostatistics are also related to research. So when you're going to do a research or you're going to do a kind of study, uh, which we call a statistical inquiry, you need to have, especially when the research you're doing is a quantitative research, you need to have some of these things behind your mind and you need to be conversant with a lot of these things such that the inquiry in which you're going to do 
would help you to be able to make appropriate um, decisions now before we go ahead i also want to quickly say something very very, very quickly right uh, i want you to consider a lot of the things i'll be saying here as information and advice so this is not a lecture this is just information and advice the information in which i wish to share across with each and every one of you today it may seem rather extensive you know but when you consider the capacity of the human brain and the amount of information that it can store and that it can decipher then I'm, I'm very sure that a few pages of information or a few slides of information today will not overburden you so it's my responsibility to take you through this process a lot of people consider statistics to be something very difficult but i consider it to be something that when you understand the basics then no matter how advanced it looks like you will um, be able to navigate through and understand now the human mind is a very complex um, system is a very complex entity even though the human mind is able to do the best of things and there's nothing that can beat the human mind the human mind is also complex in the sense that it is very difficult <clears throat> for you to convince the, the, the human mind if the human doesn't want to be convinced so consider the human mind just like a glass cup right and in that glass cup you want to put in some water into the glass cup right how do you do this you have a simple um, task just put in some water into a glass cup right so get the glass cup put it down and pour water inside that's how simple it is right but can you be able to do this can you be able to get a single drop of water into that glass cup if this glass cup was turned upside down no matter how hard you try even if you use all the water in the world you're not going to be able to get a single drop of water into that glass cup so the human mind is just like a glass cup and this glass cup needs to be placed upside up and downside down so i'm appealing to each and every one of you the information may look a little complex i'm going to simplify it as much as possible but i need you to just do one single thing search inside your mind and turn that glass cup downside down and upside up so we can pour a little statistics inside it's going to be very interesting while making it um, while adapting real life situations and well, i'm going to be talking about real life um, things that have been done so they are not things that you cannot relate to it so we're going into um, the study session proper Um, so as we all know in everyday life um, data is important for decision making I've said this over and over again the whole reason why we're talking about these statistics and um, data variables study unit of inquiry is just that we want to be able to make informed decision and the only way you can make informed objective decisions is by getting data and then analyzing that data and using it to make decisions so for example we all know that uh, mostly it's old people that get very sick with covid and they are more likely to die from covid how did we get to know about this the only way we could have known about this is because the data that was collected from covid patients um, revealed that okay so data is really needed for decision making you for you to be able to make objective decisions you need data so you need to study how this data is used you need to study how this data is collected and you need to be able to manipulate it um, or use it to uh, make adequate decisions so data is actually the raw material for decision making all right so um, if you look at this uh, pyramid yeah uh, this pyramid um, at the base of this pyramid is um, data that is collected all right so and when this data is collected and processed properly it becomes what we call information right it becomes information over here right and from the um, from the retinue of information that is obtained you can piece out some relevant knowledge right there's a lot of information but some of it is relevant knowledge that can be useful for people in uh, their day-to-day -day activity 
Now, when this knowledge is used wisely, then it is called wisdom. And that wisdom is that decision making, right? So wisdom, wise decision making. That's what it means. Okay. So um, let me give you a very quick example, right? With, um, for example, cigarette smoking. The data that is collected about cigarette smoking or the data that we collected in the past regarding cigarette smokers led to the information that cigarette smokers die pretty young at, at a young age. So when um, then we were able to get actionable information, which is knowledge that it's this death a lot of times is actually due to lung cancer right so individuals with such knowledge will be able to make that decision yeah not to smoke so the data was that uh we, we, what we collected from smokers the information we found out was that they die young the knowledge we're able to piece out from that information is the fact that most smokers eventually develop lung cancer and that lung cancer can lead to their death and the wisdom which is the wise decision we're able to make is a decision for us not to smoke or whoever is smoking that has this knowledge now should be able to wisely uh, make a decision um, to quit smoking so if that knowledge um, if with that knowledge a person still goes on and um, smokes or continues to smoke it means the knowledge was not used for proper decision making yeah and it's just like a doctor who knows from the data that he has uh, that he has been uh, uh, that he has been collecting or from what he has been seeing or what has been presented for him in books as information he knows that um, uh, and he even goes ahead to observe people dying from um, lung cancer now uh, at his work you know uh but he still goes ahead and makes decision to start smoking or he continues smoking if he was a smoker before so so that's that's unwise right so that's that's he has the data he has the information he has the knowledge but he's not wise so that's why we say some men are wise <laughs> while others are otherwise so some men are wise and some are um otherwise so, so just get it clearly here that data is that um, data is the raw material, right? So, um, just um, um, to 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 forge ahead, this data that is the raw material um, of statistics usually always originates. Where do we get this data from? It usually always originates from some form of enumeration or some form of counting, right? Someone has to go and take some counts or do perform some form of measurement you don't just get data anyhow it is someone just picture it that someone needs to actually have gone to collect this data and this collection is either maybe through some form of counting or taking some kind of measurement maybe taking somebody's height or taking somebody's weight or looking at somebody's cgpa or um or whatever right so um uh, for any statistical inquiry the basic problem is to collect facts and figures relating to a particular phenomenon under study. So if you want to do a kind of inquiry and you want to make it statistical in nature, then we are saying that um, you need to be able to collect facts and figures. You know, you cannot, you are not going to rely on hearsay. You, you want to collect facts and figures relating to that particular phenomenon. And then you can use that for um uh, you can analyze that and use it for decision making now because this data that we're talking about right um we said is the raw material you know if you're trying to make a product and the raw material you're using is defective then you're not going to be able to get a very sound product so because we say data is a raw material then we expect that um this raw material is what we're going to use to make uh, decisions in future right after analyzing it after processing it right and interpreting it because we're going to use this to make decisions then it's super important that the way in which we collect it should be systematic it should be scientific it should be in a way that we're going to collect something that has good quality and uh, and, and and such that we can use for um, decision making after we've processed it okay
you can actually go and obtain this data in different ways right there are different ways in which you can obtain this data so we need to know that one of the ways is by just going to observe so you have a situation where we can go to a health facility and we want to find out whether health facilities are actually doing um, what they are supposed to do with regards to taking care of women that come for antenatal care antenatal care is the care that a woman receives when she's pregnant and before um, delivery from the time of pregnancy up to the time of um, delivery right so we can just decide to go to maybe wanted to find out um, the level of antenatal care service provision in Zaria which is um, a local government in um, Kaduna state we can decide to pick out some health facilities and go and observe and note what they are doing at antenatal visits and then that observation will be taken as a form of our collection of data that we can now later go and analyze and use to make decisions to tell us whether do we improve the antenatal care coverage in Zaria are they doing it properly what can we do to improve this and we'll make decisions based on that we can even make policies based on that so you can actually also collect data by counting so we want to know how many um, individuals are receiving lectures regularly so we go to the lecture hall and we count one two three four five and we go to another lecture hall and count one two three four five right so this is also some form of data collection and we did this by just doing some counting and then in some uh, more specific cases we can go ahead to actually take some measurements so we want to find out the weights of uh, students in a particular class and to see whether the students are overweight they are obese or whether they have some nutritional problems we can decide to bring a scale to the class and ask a group of students to climb the scale and then we can take that measurement of weight so there are different ways in which you can obtain data just know the most popular ones are the ones that you observe or you count uh, as well as take some particular kind of uh, measurement okay but because that we just said that this data um, is going to be used for decision making we expect that the way in which we collect this data should be in a systematic fashion we should collect it in a way that is reproducible other people can come and also if they use that same method of collection of data that we used they are going to get the same or similar results on those kind of individuals that they've collected the data okay so that's that's that for um, an introduction just understanding this concept that data is the, the raw material it is um, very useful for us to make decisions we can collect this data by observing by counting or by taking measurements but we have to do this in a systematic manner okay so so um, we want to now talk about some key terms some key terminologies that will be very important um, for you to understand and be able to navigate very well throughout this course right we've had a, a lot of things in the past few slides but now this is the chance where I get to explain some of these terminologies um, or trying to use some kind of a real life kind of example so 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 I want you to um, try to picture some of the things I'll be saying in in my head I'm trying I'm not going to be as so technical but just for you to understand such that you can use this in your own um, in your own sojourn right so it all starts with this um, guy a funny guy so called Abdul Hakim yeah so he seems to have discovered a problem say uh, for instance uh, medical students of Amadou Bello University students he discovered that they were not doing very well in their exams it's something he just observed and saw that oh from uh, what he has heard from some of the students they're not really doing very well in their exams and so this Abdul Hakim guy uh, he set out to find a solution to this problem right so the first thing that Abdul Hakim will do right if we're thinking now now as as a scientist the first thing that Abdul Hakim will do uh, will be to find out how big the problem is because if he doesn't know how big the problem is it may just be that just a few students are just making complaints and by the time in which he goes to 
find out. Uh, he goes to spend his time, spend his money, spend his resources to find out the problem. He just discovers that it's just only 7 out of 630 medical students in Amadou Bello University that had actually failed or were not doing very well. You know, so it will be foolhardy to go and uh, if, you, if you want to do a study and you don't know how big uh, the, 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 the problem is, right? So imagine that only 7 out of 630 medical students did not do well compared to say 200. So which is a bigger problem? So as a scientist, you don't just start rely on hearsay, but if you are you, you are into to it, you want to do a study, which I think a lot of you will also do studies as part of your postgraduate training, right? You 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 want to make an inquiry into the problem. So if you want to solve a problem, you first will need to do, make an inquiry into the problem. So uh, Abdul Hakim uh, says. It is important to know accurately how much the problem is so in order for him to do this he will need to identify all those people that have failed and count them right that's that's the correct thing right awesome so the process of accurately trying to find out the actual issue that is on ground or is, is a problem is called the statistical inquiry so Abdul Hakim wants to make a statistical inquiry into the issue. Remember, he started by saying he wanted to know why students were failing, right? So, and instead of just saying, ah, he had two, three students have said they are failing, so most students are failing, he decided to inquire about the problem. But to do this in a scientific manner, you have to um, do what is called a statistical inquiry. So, what Abdul Hakim has decided to do is a statistical inquiry into the issue it is statistical because the inquiry is based on facts not on hearsay all right so for any statistical inquiry yeah for for any statistical inquiry the basic problem is to collect facts and figures relating to a particular problem on that study so for the case of abdul hakim he may decide to do this right using a questionnaire to collect the data and then go and analyze it right so so he may decide to just take a questionnaire go and meet a group of medical students each medical student you ask him a particular quest you ask him a series of questions so each person has a particular questionnaire right and the data that he collects he goes and he analyzes it to reach a conclusion about uh, the the problem right so um, what Abdul uh, has done in that stead is called a statistical inquiry because he's going to go and collect uh, data using a questionnaire and then he's going to measure the number of students that have actually failed, right, in, in this, um, in this uh, course. So uh, Abdul Hakim in this stead is called the investigator. Right, because he's the one that went to carry out the statistical inquiry. Okay, I hope this is clear. We come to another concept that is called the statistical units. So, and the statistical units are the units of observation or measurements for which the data is collected or derived. So, from which, where did I get, where did Abdul Hakim get this data from? He actually went to meet individual medical students, right? So each person or each unit where the observation or the measurement that we use to get the data is collected or derived is called a statistical inquiry. So it's, it's called, sorry, it's called a unit of a statistical unit. Okay. So uh, the students from who in which this investigation was collected are known as the statistical units now if these statistical units are actually like human beings uh, we can go further to to call them what you will hear a lot of times especially with people doing um, studies or statistical inquiries we can go ahead to call them respondents right respondents so he went set out to do a statistical inquiry he, Abdul Hakim, that went to do statistical inquiry is called an investigator. That's the person that carries out the statistical inquiry, right? And the um, uh, the process of 
uh, in the process of doing out the statistical inquiry, he had to um, relate with some statistical units, which are individuals, and those individuals can be called um, respondents. Okay, the process of counting or enumerating or measurement together with the systematic recording of these results is called data collection. Okay, it's called data collection or collection of statistical um, data. So, in a nutshell, what have we just said? What have we just described? Right, we've described the situation where Abdul Hakim discover the problem he wanted to find out more about the problem he decided to do a statistical inquiry so the uh, statistical inquiry is the entire work that he did okay then abdul hakim is actually the investigator because he's the one doing the statistical inquiry right he's going to be talking to persons individuals and collecting information from individuals asking them in your last exam what did you score did you pass did you fail right so that he can know the number of people that passed and the number of people that actually failed right and because he's seen individuals who are medical students medical students are the actual respondents to this um, study and then he's collecting the data also um, um, to that um, stead so i hope this is a clear uh, process the process of counting and enumerating or, or or taking measurement together with this systematic recording is actually what is called this data collection and is when you've able to, you're able to collect this data in a systematic way that you can now think of analyzing this in a proper manner all right so after learning about um, some of those basic terminologies we will now go into um, some other very important aspects of this study session which has to do with the objective and then the scope of the inquiry right it's not just enough for you to just um, discover a problem and then you just decide that you're just going to go and make an inquiry yeah if you want to make an inquiry it has to be done in a um, manner that is reproducible it has to be done in a manner that you can actually um, replicate it has to be done in a systematic manner such that you don't go and waste your time and waste um, other people's time so in order for you to do anything in this world that is of importance to you my advice is that you try by all means to set a goal and uh, that goal will require some objectives right so those objectives are those things that will help you into achieving your goals so um, goals are outcomes that you intend to achieve so in order before you think of doing any statistical inquiry first of all what is the goal right what is the goal that you want to achieve with this statistical inquiry right is your goal to improve patient outcomes is your goal to whatever your goal is right you need to have it behind your mind right so goals are those outcomes that you intend to achieve so that in the inquiry you you you, you put that behind your mind when you're going to do the inquiry so in the inquiry that abdul did yeah abdul hakim in in, in the previous descriptions his goal was to actually improve medical students success rate right in order that this um is done because remember that this is important for him right it is very very necessary that he has objectives right he he has some specific actions that will help him to achieve those goals because whereas objectives are those specific actions and they are like measurable steps that someone will need to take to achieve a goal the goals and these objectives they work hand in hand they work in tandem to achieve success so if you want to carry out a statistical inquiry the most important thing that you have to have behind your mind is to have a goal what is the outcome that you want to achieve right and then you have to now set some objectives some people preferably even call it specific objectives so and these are specific actions that will help you to achieve uh, those goals so if you create a goal you have a goal but you don't have a clear objective then you run the risk of not accomplishing 
your goals in the first place right so it's all in order for you to accomplish the goal that you set out um, to achieve right or the outcome that you set out to achieve it's really very important that you have clear objectives that help you in achieving um, those goals okay so the first and foremost step in organizing any statistical inquiry is to um, have a goal and then to define in clear and concrete terms the objectives of the inquiry okay this is actually very essential for uh, determining the nature of the kind of statistics or the kind of test that you're going to do and the kind of data that is going to be collected and also the kind of statistical techniques that you're going to employ um, for the analysis of the data that you're going to do afterwards the objectives of the inquiry would help in eliminating um, the collection of irrelevant information because you already put it clearly that this is what you want to do these are the objectives in which you are going to use to achieve that goal so this is going to help you to be organized and help you from um, collecting irrelevant information which is never used subsequently and um, could be a waste of resources and it can also reflect upon the uses uh, uh, which information can be put so in, in 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 the absence of a purpose like with your objectives and your goal right if you don't have a purpose of the inquiry being clearly stated right there's a very high chance that uh, we're bound to collect information that is irrelevant in fact worst also worst of this all is that we're even bound to collect um, omit some very important information we're supposed to collect and collect some very irrelevant information that is not necessary uh, for us and this will ultimately lead to uh, wrong conclusions a waste of our time a waste of our resources even wrong decisions that would we'll make right and this is not what we want okay so another thing that is important is what is called the scope so even though you now know what you want to collect but it's also important that you define the scope of the inquiry so the scope of the inquiry will also have a great bearing on the data that is to be collected also the techniques that you use to uh, for this collection and, and and analysis will be important with you stating the scope all right so the scope of the inquiry relates to the coverage um, with respect to the type of information the subject matter and geographical area okay so for let's go back to the example for abdul hakim right he specified the geographical area he said the geographical area is abu uh, the type of people that he's going to um to 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 work on or to do the inquiry on uh, medical students so these are going to be the respondents and he actually talked about even the subject matter what he was going to do about and what kind of information was going to collect data i was going to collect from them all right so um he will probably even be specific that he's not going to use their cgpa but he's going to just ask them whether they passed or they failed in the last exam all right so when you are talking about scope you should think about being very specific on the geographical area being very specific on the persons or groups being very specific on the kind of activity in which you are going to uh, perform okay the scope needs to be commensurate with the kind of resources that you have you if you just have maybe 10,000 naira to do um, a study uh, and and and, and uh, you, I, I don't think you should be scoping that you're going to do a study in all the medical students in Nigeria you, obviously you know that's not even enough to transport you from here to the next medical school or the closest medical school all right so the scope needs to be commensurate with the kind of resources that you have and it's good for you to state the scope of the study so this helps you to um, make it commensurate with the available resources in terms of money manpower and even the time that is going to be required um, for the availability of the results of the inquiry okay so uh, the objectives and the scope determine the extent to which you are going to carry out 
the, the inquiry. So to sum all these things up, what are we saying here? If you want to um, undergo a kind of um, statistical inquiry, it is really important that you um, state your goals, you have it behind your mind. These are the things you want to achieve. You now set up some specific actions to achieve those goals. What are those things you want to determine this, you want to determine that, you want to do this, you want to do that, right? That when you put all those things together, it will help you to determine your outcome uh, or to help you to achieve your goals. Yeah. And then you have to make sure these objectives that you have are clear. They are clearly defined, right? And then you also determine the scope. How far are you willing to go? Yeah. Are you only going to um, look at the students in ABU? Or you're going to look at ABU and BUK? Are you going to look at only medical students? Or you're going to include nursing students, pharmacy students, and veterinary uh, students of the veterinarian um, sciences, right? <clears throat> so you determine the scope uh, and then this will tell how far or how wide or uh, how specific the inquiry is going to be. Yeah, so we're going to continue with our description of statistical units here. So, um, you know, if you have an object or a group of objects with which the measurement that you are going to take or the count in your statistical inquiry, that object or group of objects is they are called statistical units right a statistical unit so a statistical unit is just simply telling you about um what are those individuals or objects or things in which you are going to take your measurements from okay so for example in um, a survey the uh, statistical unit might be an individual right or uh, just just a person or it might as well even be a household, right? So a household. It could be a family, right? It could also be um, maybe individuals in a village or staying in a block of apartments or a block in a locality, right? A very important step before you start collecting data is for you to define um, clearly the statistical units. Uh, in which your, your data is going to be collected, right? In a number of situations, the units are very conventional. You know, they are already fixed, like they are physical units of measurement. Uh, sometimes you can even think about the units, the statistical units to mean even the units that you use for the instrument. So sometimes you can even have it as fixed as maybe um, meters, uh, kilograms, you know, and these things need to be very specific because it will help us to avoid any kind of wrong or inconsistent measurement. We don't want you to measure something in this person. And then because that measurement is inconsistent, you measure something else in another person and you are not measuring the correct, um, the correct stuff. So this statistical units before you start your data collection must be clearly um, defined. Okay must be clearly defined to avoid any kind any kind of error okay so there are particular guidelines for you to um, decide about what unique unit you are going to use um, in a statistical inquiry so we're going to spend a couple of minutes here to just explain what are those guidelines and how you need to look at them so these are the requisites of um, a statistical um, uh, unit okay first of all it must be unambiguous and this is this is straightforward right a statistical unit should be rigidly defined in such a way that it does not lead to any kind of ambiguity in um, interpretation so these units must cover the uh, maybe the entire population and they should be um, distinct and they should not overlap in a sense that every element of the population belongs to one and only one statistical unit so I'll, I'll give an example here you want to take a measurement for say um, knowledge you want to find out whether people are knowledgeable about a particular um, thing so we want to ask about the knowledge of COVID-19 right among 
uh, individuals. Now, the unit that we want to use to measure uh, maybe is called a knowledge score, right? So we're looking at statistical units now in form of the units of measurements, right? So, and it's called a knowledge score. So we expect that this knowledge score, anybody that scores above, maybe is a 10 question um, questionnaire with 10 knowledge questions. So we want the, our unit for this score to be unambiguous. It should be very clear. Anybody that scores five has good knowledge. Five and above has good knowledge. Anybody that has less than five has a poor knowledge. We don't want to say anybody that scores five and above has good knowledge. Anybody that scores five and below has good knowledge. What if somebody that scores five? That's five and above and five and below. So it's ambiguous and you can see that it's overlapping. So the units must cover the population that we're talking about and they should be distinct and non-overlapping in the sense that everybody must belong to one particular unit or, uh, or statistical unit or the other okay so it should not be ambiguous it should be unambiguous all right the second thing is that it should be specific right we don't expect that um, the particular statistical unit that we are working on is is not precise so it needs to be precise and um and, and and specific so leaving no chance for the investigators for example when we say you want to measure age at last birthday or you want to measure age we don't you, you don't go and say what is your age right because um some people take this age to mean so many different things like uh for example there's a popular saying that uh men are as old as they feel while women are as old as they look okay so someone you ask him of his age you just say his age right? he may not give you the exact age he may give you the age he, he he's going to his birthday is next week for example right and he's 35 now by by next week he's going to be 36 so he just tells you he's 36 years old right another person knows that his age he's not yet 36 so he tells you he's 35 right so but you need to be very specific with the kind of statistical unit of measurement if age was saying age at last birthday so it's age in years and age at last birthday something that's that specific okay so um the next thing is that it should be um stable right it should be stable so the unit that you select and you want to use should be stable over a long period of time um with also with respect to places so there shouldn't be a kind of significant um significant changes to the value of the unit at different intervals of time or at different places because um in a contrary case if you collect data at different times or places then um they you might not be able to compare them because if for instance what people are calling meter in nigeria is different from what they are calling meter in ghana or what people are using for a liter in nigeria is different from what people are using as liter in ghana then we cannot compare what wherever we find in ghana and in uh, nigeria unless if that unit that we're talking about is a stable kind of unit so one of the things that you have to put into consideration is that this must be stable so the unit that we're talking about should uh, be selected uh, that the unit that you select should be should just imply as far as possible the same characteristics irrespective of the time irrespective of the place whether it's ghana whether it's nigeria whether it's the us and that's a good statistical unit okay it should also be that um the whatever inquiry that you want to do the unit that you're using is appropriate right you don't want to say you are going to um uh, you want to inquire about the number of hours that uh, medical students probably sleep maybe this affects their activity and this affects their learning and this also affects um their uh, pass rate okay so and then you now go and start you are measuring their heights what what does that help us to do right so whatever you need statistical unit that you are using must be appropriate to the kind of inquiry so we're expecting that maybe you want to find out how many minutes they read every day what time of the day do they read and the rest like that so so this is really important and then the other thing is that it must be um, uniform so um, uniform in the sense that 
uh, it is essential that the unit that you adopt should be um, homogeneous. It should be uniform throughout the investigation so that um, the measurements that you are obtaining right, uh, are comparable almost similar to that that we said was stable right so it should be uniform so for example if you are measuring length and we are using um, one yard right on some occasions and meter on another occasion then in a particular investigation a particular inquiry then the values that we obtain the observations will be very confusing and misleading for one person you're measuring you're using yards the other person you're using meter the other person so whatever kind of statistical unit that you've decided to use it must be uniform quickly a, a quick run through we want it to be unambiguous very very clear no ambiguity it should be specific it should be stable right not a different one here and a different one in another country right it should be appropriate not using a particular unit that doesn't even speak to the kind of inquiry and then it should be uniform in between the um, individuals or the testing that you'll be doing yeah so so we'll now be going into types of statistical units we've been talking a lot about statistical units and i'm sure people are trying to get the hang of it but i'm sure by the time we go a, a bit into these types of statistical units then you're going to get it a little clearer and it becomes everything is going to add up and you're going to get it a little clearer yeah because i talked about the different types although subtly but now by the time we go through this you're going to get it a little clearer and i did this intentionally such that uh by the time you look at this video again you're, you're now going to get it a little clearer and then it becomes clearer as as, as you go along so statistical units can uh, are broadly classified as follows right you have what we call units of collection yeah and units of uh, analysis okay or units of analysis and interpretation the units of collection can broadly be divided into two you have a unit of enumeration a unit of recording let me just try to make this a little very clear here right don't mind about any of the big words or whatever all what we're just trying to say is that and if you had been following the last few slides all i'm just trying to say here is that when you talk about statistical units remember this has to do with the data collection that you are going to do are you going to be collecting data from individuals yeah that individual is a statistic statistical unit are you going to be using a tape rule to measure in meters that meter is also some form of statistical unit okay are you going to identify a house among different houses and collect information from the individuals within the house so and then even after you've collected this data that you have how do you intend to analyze it and interpret it so we're going to be describing different units at this level no any uh, basis for confusion just understand that you have a unit statistical unit when we're talking about collection but even after collection remember you have to analyze the data right you have to even make some interpretations of the data and it's that interpretation that gives you knowledge and then your ability to use that knowledge wisely is what leads to um, wisdom right and a wise decision making okay yeah so we'll be talking about the unit of collection here so in, in the unit of collection any statistical inquiry whether it's conducted by maybe doing some kind of sampling or whether you are doing a kind of like census right maybe you're using the whole population or you just use the group or just a sample of the population right the unit of enumeration is or unit of collection yeah is the basic unit on which the observations are made right uh, or are, are, are to be made so so what we're just saying here is that who did you collect the data from or where did you collect the data from or from what object did you collect the data from right that's the unit of collection so remember that we said the unit of collection uh, we have unit of enumeration or the unit of recording so you, you know that at first of all you have to approach somebody let's give an example of the study that abdul hakim did 
right he had to approach medical students okay so at the level in which he approached medical students um, he approached them as individuals so the unit of enumeration is individuals he could have also met them and then uh, when he has met them he wants to ask them uh, he, you, he probably wants to ask them some things about also their sleep pattern maybe their sleep pattern is one of the reasons why they have problems with passing their exams so he goes ahead and asks about their sleep pattern and part of the questions is asking about the sleep patterns has to do with how long do they sleep okay so he's recording how long so he's asking um, hello please how long do you sleep and then the lady is telling him that she sleeps for just only three hours in a day okay so the unit of enumeration is that medical student right and then the unit of recording or measurement is the hour the number of hours you know in hours the, that unit is in hours right so please i hope this is getting a little clearer now you can have a unit of collection at the point of collection you know you have to figure out who you are going to collect that data from that's your unit of uh, collection but even at that point in time we can have um, some difference the person in which you are collecting that data from right that that unit is it from an individual is it from a group of individuals like a family is it from like a block of flats is it like from you know so that's your unit of enumeration so this unit of enumeration might be a person it can be a household it can be a family like we said in the previous slides right it can be um it can be it can, it, it can even be a, a a shop or a livestock okay so it can be a farm all right so so these are units of enumeration okay so you can also have what we call units of recording right and this could be in kilograms it could be in meters it could be in seconds i'm going to go to over this again very quickly because I, I i want people to be clear about this when you talk about statistical units remember we said in the previous slides we could have uh units of collection or units of analysis and interpretation under the units of collection um, this is at the point in which the data is being collected right you, you could have what we call the unit of enumeration or the unit of recording. And this has to be very clear. This has to be well understood, right? And these are some of those things that you write clearly in your proposal when you are doing a study or in your protocol for the study so that anybody reading this would want to look at what's the unit of recording? What's the unit of enumeration? What's the unit of this? What's the unit of that? So that it gives a clear picture as to what you want to do. So based on the unit of collection, the unit of enumeration is that person or that group of persons or that household that the data is collected from but the unit of recording yeah or the unit of measurement is that particular measurement did you use a tape rule so you had meters did you measure the person's weight so you had kilograms did you measure how long the person sleeps so you have seconds or um, hours right so this is just or what uh, the unit of collection is now this is important in a, in a study uh, because you you need to be very specific in your scope on how you have done this or how you intend um, to do this let me give another example so I, I decided to go to a particular community and this time I'm not interested in the individuals within the house I wanted to measure for example I wanted to measure the uh, um, the wealth of the uh, the, the the particular um, uh, uh, the individual. Uh, I wanted to measure the wealth of households in a particular um, community. Now, note that I won't go to the households and then meet each individual in the household and be asking them how much do you earn, uh, and calculating it how much do you earn. But I might just know that. I'm doing it household by household. So the first household I get to that I've identified, I might just get the uh, household head to give me that information, right? But my unit of enumeration is the household, okay? 
So, and then the information he's giving me is about maybe how much they make in a month. So, my unit of recording will now be in Naira. I hope this is clear. I'm going to give another example again. I'm going to keep on giving examples till everybody understands this because everybody needs to understand some of these basics before we go into um, uh, other aspects. So, I'll give another example again. I'm going to do something in a particular uh, among villages, right? Maybe I want to find out why um, there's iodine deficiency or why there's iodine, uh, iodine deficiency goiter in communities in Kasina state. This is one of the states in Nigeria, right? So, uh, and in Kasina, there are over 500 different communities that you find in villages and the rest like that. A lot of communities from the various local government areas. So if I'm going to go to the community, I'm not, uh, I'm probably not so particular about going to ask individuals in the community. The kind of study I've decided to do is to just go and see what is happening in that community, see the kind of plants that they have and check out what they have in that community and then go and check out the same thing in the other communities, right? So my unit of enumeration is communities, communities, communities. I'm going to individual communities, right? But my unit of recording might be the type of plants that they have or the uh, the intensity of chlorophyll in the plants that they have you know and which is maybe measured in some kind of um, uh, uh, quality or is measured in some kind of number or something like that so I hope this is clear now when you talk about the units of recording or measurement the units of recordings are like the units in terms of which the data is actually recorded right in other words the, what unit did you use to quantify what you measured, right? So units of recording for um, for like quantity may be like weights, like I said, in case maybe you're measuring food grains, for example. So weights in kilograms or in case of time, it could be recording in seconds. This unit of measurement okay, may also sometimes be classified as simple or composite right so uh, if the units just represent one single condition without any kind of quantification right or qualification sorry then you say they are simple units such as meter or kilogram but you can have um, units that, uh, uh, that that can be a little more complex so imagine that you have something like BMI basic um, uh, body mass index sorry BMI body ma mass index and this is calculated by measuring somebody's weight in kilograms and dividing by the height in meter squared okay so you can see you have multiple units coming together kilogram up you have meter squared down and you know so you, you can have um, something that can be as complex um, as that so a simple unit with some qualifying words can also sometimes be referred to as being um, composite right so but, but but don't get too worked up about that you have a lot of units that uh, can be what you need to be very clear about is that which is the unit of collection and which is the unit of analysis even at the unit of collection what's the unit of enumeration right is it a person or a household a family a farm livestock um, villages right blocks of houses what's the unit of recording was it in kilograms? Is it in meters? Is it in seconds? Is it in candela? Right? Is it in candles? I'm going to leave you with that. And for those guys that still remember their physics, what kind of uh, measurement is done in candela or in candles? Right? I'll leave you with that for those that can. If you if you remember, please put it in the um, put it in the in the chat uh, below. If you if you remember, for those that are good with um, physics and the rest. So, so alrighty so so here we'll be coming to the final um aspects where we'll be talking about units of analysis and interpretation remember we said the statistical um units can either be um units of um collection or units of analysis and interpretation right so here were units of analysis and interpretation and what we're trying to talk about here is that units of analysis and interpretation are those kind of units that help to facilitate um, like some kind of comparison between different sets of data with respect to time place or environment all right don't get worked up it's something very simple right uh, generally, you, you talk about unit of analysis 
in forms of like rates right so if you hear something like kilometers per hour i'm sure you will know that we're talking about um speed right but remember that when you say kilometers per hour you are talking about how many kilometers um someone is going in one hour so we're talking of two things here we have one variable on top which is the numerator which is the distance covered and then the other variable under which is the time it takes for that distance right so in in unit of analysis we are just talking about um, units that can help to facilitate comparison here we're comparing distance to time okay so imagine when somebody says he ran um, uh, at the speed of his he went at the speed of 60 kilometers per hour and this other person went at the speed of 200 kilometers per hour i'm sure you know now that this there's some basis of comparison because we know this person covered 60 kilometers in one hour while this person covered 200 kilometers in another hour so these units of analysis helps us to be able to compare different data with respect to time place and environment okay so you have also what we call ratios and these ratios also very similar to rates in fact rates are a form of ratios it's just that for ratios what you have on top and what you have below are quite quite similar as numerator and denominators you also have the very popular one that most of us know is percentages right imagine that you have um like from the study that abdul hakim did and maybe he studied one particular classroom of medical students and out of a classroom of a hundred medical students um 20 of them failed right uh, i'm sure you know that's 20 percent okay so in another classroom of uh, 200 medical students only 20 failed okay so that's 10 percent for example okay so you can see that we're trying to compare we can look at two classes and say in this class even though their numbers are not the same uh, 100 level class there are 100 there are uh, maybe 200 medical students in 200 level class there may be 100 medical students in number you right but in the first instance um, the number of people that failed are the same but you can know that the rate at which or the percentage of failure is higher in one class than the other so what these units of analysis help us to do is that they help us to facilitate that kind of comparison between different sets of data with respect to time and place another one that we have is called coefficients i'm sure a lot of you have been hearing about coefficients of variation coefficient they are all to help to do some kind of um, comparison so rates involve comparison between two heterogeneous quantities right where the numerator and the denominator are like not from the same kind right so you'll be hearing things like maternal mortality rate uh fertility rate or birth rate and so on so you have sometimes rates are uh, even expressed per thousand or per ten thousand or per hundred thousand you know just remember anytime you see rates you hear per something and i'll explain a little more when we get to the previous the the following slides okay so um rates are usually expressed uh per thousand like i said before and uh for instance crude bat rates is like total number of live bats in a given region uh or locality during a given period of uh time in a to, uh, um, to the total population in that region and you know you can use that to compare what's the crude bat rate in this community compared to the crude bat rate in another community or what's the crude bat rate in this country or in this region compared to a, another um, region because we're dividing by the total population in that particular region okay so sometimes when you have rates per unit it's called a coefficient but don't worry yourself so much about it we'll explain them a little further as we go along all right ratios are per and percentages are usually used for comparing uh, also quantities but a lot of times these quantities are like homogeneous right so when the numerator and the denominator are of like the same kind you you, you understand that so for example when you say a ratio of smokers to non-smokers right in a particular locality we're, we're talking of maybe we say ratio of smokers to non-smokers is one is to three 
so that implies like uh, some percentage of the population are actual smokers okay so we'll be going ahead to explain some of these concepts i know for some people they are new concepts but just understand that by the time in which you have collected your data remember that you still have to do some analysis now in the unit of analysis i do you really want to be comparing one data point to another data point or data elements to some other data elements if you're going to be doing that you would have to employ using one of any of these units of analysis are you going to be employing rates are you going to be employing ratios are you going to be employing percentages are you going to be employing coefficient and i gave you an example of like uh, percentages I imagine that i did a study among medical students and out of uh 600 level medical students or out of medical students of about 600 maybe god forbid maybe like a hundred of them failed for example right and that's um uh, one out of six failed which is not really a good um, thing so if somebody else did another study in another medical school say Bayero University Kano right and he found out that one out of ten failed I'm sure we're clear here that we, we have a basis for comparison even though we had 600 we have 600 medical students in abu maybe in bio university they just have 400 maybe less you know but for us to be able to compare we would want to do some form of percentage we say here the total number of people that fail divided by the total number of people that we have 20 percent for example in that other place the total number of people that fail divided by the total number of people that they had 40 percent so you can say that ah there are so many people failed in this place uh, compared to so many people uh, not so many people in the other place so this unit of analysis helps in comparison between groups and it also helps in comparison with the data that you have Alrighty, this brings us to the end um, we have so far in this session discussed how data is important for decision making yeah um, and for you to make a good decision you know the data that you have that you have must be good it's uh, so it must be collected properly in a systematic manner we talked about the terminologies yeah the different key terminologies that are used we discussed about the process of data collection during an inquiry when you're doing an inquiry yeah and then we went ahead to also talk about um, statistical units uh, to be used and the various types of statistical units and we talked about their categorization now um, having known the processes of data collection we shall see how we can obtain data from different sources when we come to the next um, study um, setting thank you so much for listening i thank you all for coming in and listening it has been a great pleasure interacting with each and every one of you in this um, a chat on WhatsApp, you know. And as usual, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I wish you the best always and see you in the next video. Peace.